A mile down the road, the village of Downton also has a brass band, and the rivalry between the two is intense. Downton is bigger, prettier and famous. Sir Walter Raleigh, Lord Nelson and George IV all lived in the village. In days gone by, the Downton band were in no way competitive, playing only in the community and strictly for fun, leaving the trophy hunting to their neighbours. Woodfall's band was uh, they were started first, but they were a temperance lot, you see, whereas the Downton chaps was a, all a very boozy lot. And uh, when they, in, in years and years ago, they used to play down through the village, and of course there was five pubs in the village, and all the landlords gave them a, <laughs> a pint of beer. And I heard my dad say, by the time they got to the White Horse, which was the fourth pub, they couldn't recognise the notes, you know, so they had to play by ear. <laughs> <laughs> but the Downton band of the 1990s is changing its image. They too are becoming seriously competitive. This year, for the first time, both the Downton and Woodfalls bands have qualified for the big blow, the prestigious West of England Championships. The contest is now only days away. And just down the road, the Downton Band, too, is using every opportunity to rehearse. The Moot, an Anglo-Saxon amphitheatre, is the ideal setting for a concert. Downton's new conductor, Ian Lowes, is a professional musician. I came to brass banding quite late. I came from the orchestral musical world, the classical world, and I expected the brass bands to be a stereotype, but I've found quite the opposite. So I've found people from all walks of life, doctors of psychology, accountants, bricklayers, plumbers, teachers, the whole of life really seems to be interested in brass banding. Although the band was formed a century ago, it's only recently that Downton have become competitive. Having achieved higher standards, there now burns the ambition to beat Woodfalls. I've been with this band for uh, over a year and one of the, the things that was put to me at first was that there is such a rivalry that they want to beat Woodfalls. That is more important than winning. That is winning. even more than that, better than ever we were. But they're not really part of the village, just such, not in a way. I mean, we played at all the church fates, chapel fates, the local Jim Canna took part in tug of war and that. And I heard them say that uh, the band went to Amesbury once and they came back with three cups. But not one of them was for playing. Uh, one was for the best dressed band, one was for the best on the march, and was, one was for winning the tug of war. <laughs> They once had a very posh set of uniform with all the gold bars all across. And one of the local wits, he was heard to remark after they'd been playing, well, it's a pretty plumage, but they can't whistle. <laughs> the local input is, is fairly small in terms of, of membership, inevitably, because uh, you, as soon as your standard gets higher, you're looking for a, a level of playing which couldn't be obtained by a small community. As soon as they can get a new bandsman from outside, they bring him in and it doesn't matter about who was playing before if he's a bit better he takes the place and this does lead to a bit of uh, ill feeling now and then I think Colston Hall Bristol and 450 musicians arrive for the West of England Championships 18 bands playing the same composition one after the other the draw is crucial Band number seven, Downton. A middle to high number is considered favourable. Oh no. <laughs> is drawn number one. And number one is the worst drawer of all. Can you all 
gather round, please. All right, you probably all realise that it's a very lively acoustic in there. We definitely don't want to be accused of overblowing. Keep it well within our bounds, as it were. Make a good sound. Be very precise about the articulation because it responds well to that, that sort of acoustic. Don't let it splash around. Immediately before going on stage, each bandsman has to sign on and prove his identity. Oh, Mr. Chisler, hello. Hi. In the old days, it was not unknown for some star musicians to play for more than one band. same instrumentation and yet each band can actually produce a different sound, different style, different dynamics, different interpretation. So the, the piece is actually different and as an adjudicator one listens to that difference and uh, bases the uh, adjudication on the musicality of the piece. actually finished last, 18th, which is a bit of a shock for the band. Um, but it's just one of those things I've got to accept. We were looking to maybe be in the first eight or nine, you know. They're all bandsmen, they know that, uh, that results can be good and can be bad. This is just one of those that's really atrocious as far as the band is concerned, probably the worst um, that they've had ever. Probably the best they've ever played as far as they're concerned.